the word that comes to me that 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 allows me to um, reflect on 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 that kind of encounter is what is termed uh, uh, synchronicity, because my life uh, I can track many things that that seem to be very have to do with synchronicity that somehow I was at the right place at the right time to meet that person or to meet this situation and it's always been kind of magical it's been kind of wow isn't that an incredible coincidence and so on and I've given up on on that explanation I just have it just I believe that there is I don't want to get too Presbyterian here uh, not that there is a, a predestined destination, but I believe that there is a field, again, of energy. There is a field of possibility. Um, and let me try and put it in, in, a, in a slightly different way. Uh, we talked a little bit about the, the imbalances in life. And that at some point, just like an a, a, a earthquake happens because... Uh, so, something finally has to shift. Something happens, and then boom, you get that earthquake. So it is in the social milieu that you can live life as if it wasn't going to change, but pressures are building. Things that you don't know about are building, and therefore there will be a happening. There will be an encounter. Call it with a mystery. Call it with the way life is. But at some point that imbalance will come at you. Same way, if you are resonant with that life, that same encounter will come as here is something that you can act on, that will release that pressure, that will, that will be part of the solution, will be part of the creative process, to use a very broad term. And I've had many of those happenings that when I look back on, I'd say, you know, wasn't that coincidental? And that's the way I, I did it early on. Just going back to chemistry, you know, I, I invented this compound. Uh, it was coincidental. I mean, it really, 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 really was. One of the things we used to do is we, we, we would get scientific journals from the library. There was no internet, of course, at those points. You couldn't go on and find things. You had to search for things. And so we would circulate the Journal of Organic Chemistry, the Journal of American Chemical Society, the, the this, the that, and so on and so forth. There was dozens of journals, and you signed up for which ones you wanted brought to your desk, and usually you just scratched your name off and put it in the outbox, you know. You didn't have time for it. But I signed up, and one of them, God knows why, I signed up for was the Swedish Journal of Chemistry or Organic Chemistry. I've forgotten what it was. I knew it was Swedish. It was English, but Swedish Journal. And I signed up for it, and this one day I picked it up, and I usually just put it in the outbox, and I just, I leafed through it, you know, just, and I saw this chemical. And I said, that's what I need to make. But it, it had to be modified to, to be an, a, a, a stabilizer, an antioxidant. It was not. It was simply an a isocyanuric acid, for those who want to look up the term, base uh, chemical. But I said, that might be what I need to make. And that became the, the crystal. And I've often seen creativity, as I talk about, as, as, as like a crystal. See, in chemistry, uh, uh, when you make something new, it's, it, it tends not to be a crystal. It, it tends, if you're making an organic chemical, it tends to be a goo. Because it's never been made before. It's never had a form before. It's never existed before. So it doesn't necessarily crystallized, get into orientation a crystal has to have. And so what you do is you scrape the side of the test tube and you do all sorts of, you dissolve it and 
bring it back down and so on and etc etc et cetera, et cetera. and it always has impurities in it which keeps it from crystallizing and so on but once it crystallizes once it takes form then it always crystallizes after that and not just you anywhere in the world if somebody made that chemical, it will not come as a goo, it will come as a crystal, if it's pure. For years, that was known as the crystals in the beard theory. <laughs> in the 1800s, the chemists would make things, and they would think that, well, what happens was that because it crystals, they get in the beard, and when they walk around, they... They just sort of disperse in the air, and that's how they become something that something else can build on, you know? Not true. Again, going back to the, uh, some of the things, there's a morphogenetic field. I not just believe in, I really know that it happens. So that <clears throat> time and space don't matter. When it happens, it happens at crystal consciousness, if you can use that term, that crystalline reality is immediately available to any other that is there. That's why so often in you look in history, you'll find the same breakthrough in consciousness happens multiple places in the world, and they sure as hell didn't get around to talk to each other. There is something, quote, in the air <laughs> that they latched on to, and that Consciousness was available to someone else's consciousness, unbeknownst to them. And that's why we had great movements, because that possibility happens, and you realize this is the time. Call it pregnant time, call it uh, destinal time, call it whatever, you know, uh, time you want. But there is a time for things to happen. So, and it's true in your life. <clears throat> and I believe that what your life is about is being awake so that when that time happens, at least it doesn't go past you, you know. You, you damn, this is, isn't it fascinating I'm talking to this person? Maybe, just maybe, is it, this is a, a crystal for something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But that's what it means to live your life out of, quote, what we call live out of possibility. Possibility is about the, the ability to say each and every situation has within it a seed. And whether you're contributing to its crystallization or, or its growth or what have you, you have no idea. Maybe it was just your, all you needed to do was just dump on it and give it a little fertilizer and somebody else will harvest it, as we sang about. You don't know. I mean, if, if, if you live some other way, you think you're the center of the universe, you know. Everything is sort of happening in and through me. That's, you know, that's, that's stupid. But when you're genuinely participating in life, that's the way you encounter as if everything you do is contributing in a way to this happening. 